guys, good evening. It is Kimberly and um, we are back with our broadcast continuing to work on this vintage vanity that we were um, have been working on I think for about a couple weeks. So we had the Tuesday, we have Thursday of last week and then this week, Tuesday, Thursday. In between I've been doing some work on it as well um, behind the scenes while we were um, off the broadcast. So um, tonight I am just going to give us a few minutes to um, have some people gather on with us. It is probably a few minutes after 8 as um, I'm a little late. Um, just got finished up um, in the house. Um, my husband came in late as far as dinner and all that fun stuff. And so here we are. And I apologize for being a few minutes late. But I also want to welcome you and um, say hello. Uh, my name is Kimberly. If this is your first time here, I am with Unique Finds and Furniture Designs, a furniture artist that features Dixie Bell chalk paint and their products, as well as the Prima Design Transfers. So if you are joining us tonight for the first time, we welcome you. We thank you for joining. Please comment and let us know you're here so that we can also welcome you and uh, ask questions because that's what I'm here for. My goal is to help you be successful in using our products and um, getting the best look possible for your pieces. Um, so no matter what your style or your design is, if you are a shabby chic fan or if you're a farmhouse or you're a French cottage country, um, mid-century modern, you name it, any style, fashion, and um, design is capable um, of producing with this particular chalk paint. And um, the, uh, the, one of the best things, and we'll go into that a little bit later about this particular line, is uh, some of the features that it has and what it can do for your furniture. So um, if you are just joining me, thank you. Sorry I am running a tad bit late on this broadcast, but we are here and we are up and rolling. And I'm anxious to show you a few things that we have done to the piece while we have been offline. So um, obviously I've been working on the mirror, which is behind me. I did get it painted. Also um, did it very similar to this vanity, uh, or to, to the vanity itself. But first and foremost, as always in all of my broadcasts, I like to do a a rundown of the products that we used while we were preparing to um, get this piece ready for painting. So um, those of you who have been following this video or these tutorials may know from our previous broadcast that our piece had veneer issues. Um, we did, I did remove the veneer um, on all the drawers. Uh, the rest of the body of the piece was perfectly fine. You can catch that over on my YouTube channel at The Vintage Queen on the YouTube, or you can also go back on our Facebook videos and see those tutorials and how we removed it and how we repaired in between. So with that said, I always start with um, a basic piece. I always start with our white lightning cleaner. I always clean my piece really, really well. It's very important to get your piece clean. And a lot of times I will use a what I call is the scotch Bright, and I'm going to show you that. And so it's a little, even in all of our workshops, we use, it's a little green, almost looks like a scouring pad. It's a scotch Bright. I use it while I'm using my cleaner. This is a mix. You mix it with your warm water and shake it up real good. Um, once you do that, it helps almost, hey, hello, thank you for joining us uh, from Florida. So, um, what I do is I clean really, really well with my Scotch Bright and my White Lightning Cleaner. So I get my piece completely clean and then um, I let it dry. And then after I did that, if I had any repairs that was necessary, then I would come in and use my Dixie Mud. Now I did use it only on a few places on my piece. And I'm going to grab my water real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a dry, I had a dry throat. So I apologize. I'm getting some water here. So after I put my mud on, this was a mahogany finish. So mahogany and teak and um, what's the other one? Cherry. All of those woods are going to bleed through your paint on you. So I did also use the boss. So after I cleaned it, I let it dry. 
then I came in and I did any repair that I needed with my with my uh, block uh, with my Dixie mud and then I came in and I used the boss so that is a prep that's the prep I did before I put any paint on this piece and to me there must must things to do if this had been a um, oak piece of furniture you would not have needed the boss you could have eliminated the boss but you would still clean it and you'd still use your mud for any repairs once that is accomplished and those things i'm going to put away so we've done that we've got our clean on there and the boss i i particularly use uh, often is the clear boss this is the clear boss i put it in this little jug but it just makes it easier when i do workshops so that um, we can just dip it out um, into it so then we're going to go into the body of what we've done here and i'm going to focus you down a little bit more um do you waste a lot of paint when you transfer to the bottles no actually i so far i have used them for my workshops and it doesn't seem to um, create any issues i buy a um a 16 ounce is fine and open a 16 ounce and put it in these and um, actually i feel like it doesn't clump as bad so um, a lot of times when you're using in a workshop like this you know and you get your lids put on wrong um, and then that is what creates that clumping where the, um, what I want to say, the chalk mineral paint starts to dry around the edges. You don't see that when you put them in these bottles. So especially with workshop classes, I do try to provide the products in the workshop classes. So um, that's why I keep them in these. And it also keeps me from having a lot of um, open containers that just sort of makes a mess. And like I said, gets clumpy around the edges. You know, if you've been using chalk paint, you know the air dries it. So along the edges of it, it can get messy. So that's why I use those phyllo bottles. I think they're called phyllo bottles. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm gonna tilt you down now and give you a look-see at what we're working on. So this is a 1960s, somewhere in there. Um, a vintage vanity obviously and I have come in here and I have placed um, I got sea glass here it's not sea glass it's actually Savannah mist in um, in this body of ours we did a blend the other night on our live you guys saw the blend that we did and um, that blend was with the Savannah mist I'm gonna tilt you up just a tad you see I have furniture covered back there because I don't really want it to get on some of my finished pieces a lot of times I cover my piece and just let them sort of cure in here. And um, so I use the Savannah Mist and my lighter shade in here is the drop cloth where I put it in and then came back in and blended those. And also the color that you see now, this color in here is actually, you're welcome, no worries at all, uh, the apricot color. So this is apricot, this is Savannah Mist, and we also have some drop cloth in here where we did a little blend. If you guys were with us the other night, you probably remember us doing that blend. And we were, I did mention that I was gonna do the Cosmic Roses. However, on this piece, I ended up not using the Cosmic Roses. I ended up using our Rose Celebration because I just kind of liked the colors. When I put the Cosmic Roses, I think it was a little bit stark. And I think this is a little softer on my piece. And so let me just kind of pull you guys down. And I'm probably gonna have to get off of my chair just to kind of get you guys over here. So you can kind of get a little better look-see at the piece. So um, I did come in and I put the, the um, rose transfer on. Uh, so I put it on the corners, just kind of the way I liked it. And then also, I did can do the striping here in the apricot. What I did here, I also did to the sides. So I'm just going to kind of tilt, bring you around and show you on the side here as well. Now, we were off camera when we did this. So, um, so this is the side of it. Now, I do not have a top coat on this as of yet, but I will be going over my transfer, pretty much over my piece with a top coat, and my go-to is the um, clear coat satin. So I will be going over that. Now, the hardware is original. I'm gonna pull you back in. And I know we're kind of going over a lot because I want to get to the top tonight because really tonight's video and tutorial was for this top. And you see, I have a few items sitting here that is going to represent what we're doing. 
Now the hardware is original to the piece. I have not cleaned it, I've not touched it. I've left it in its patina state, if you wanna call it that. So why I did that is for a couple of reasons, because I'm gonna fa fashion the top of my vanity after my hardware. So I like that nice contrast, and you're asking probably right now is why do we have brown on here? This is actually the Dixie Belle chocolate, and I have my mist bottle. That's what I use when I'm blending, just so that, and I use my oval medium brush when I'm blending. Tonight, those are not what we're doing tonight in this video. We are pretty much wrapping up all that we went over, <clears throat> excuse me, everything that we've done here for the past two weeks on this vanity. And it's been slow because we have been doing two weeks of tutorials, so just kind of step-by-step -step guide so that you guys can see what we do. Now, obviously, this is an older uh, piece. Now, inside the drawers, I'm gonna pull you in. Inside the drawers, I did use Big Mama's Butter in here, and you can tell the drawers just almost look just brand new. So I did use that on it actually today, and uh, let me see if I have that here. And I will bring it in. So if you have some drawers where your drawers are looking pretty um, roughed up, a lot of times you'll see writing on some of these or stamps. I noticed on the inside of this drawer, it is stamped on the inside with a number. So I got out the Big Mama's Butter, and this is in the Orange Grove. And if you guys have not used this, this is a treasure. It works amazing. You see the drawer looks brand new. This is a 1960-some vanity, and look how awesome the drawer looks. And this is the Big Mama's Butter, and I have it in Orange Grove. And the smell just puts you right in the Florida groves. It just smells amazing. Or California groves where the oranges are grown. But you see how wonderful the drawer looks inside? That is nothing more than um, the Big Mama's Butter in there. And I put it on with a rag and cleaned it up really well. And so you see how it turned out in there. I just wanted to touch on that just to kind of show you. I also put it on the edge. And since it's kind of a, um, it feels like a wax base. Um, I know it's not wax, but um, when you put it on, it really, really, really makes a smooth surface. And you see how well the drawer just glides. So that is part of having that Big Mama's Butter on there. If you guys haven't um, experienced that, you'll love it. You'll love it when you're working um, with it. So with all of that said, now we do go back. This is the Rose Celebration Transfer that's on the sides. This is the, the uh, apricot color. So I don't know if you guys have used uh, apricot a lot, but it super, super, super goes well with the transfer that I put on here, the colors in this floral design. Much, much better than um, the Cosmic Roses, which was a lot of blues and yellows. Um, did you use inside the drawers before? Um, did I clean it with the white lightning cleaner? Actually, I did. I um, Actually, with a damp cloth, I did clean it with the white lightning cleaner with a cloth. I didn't spray it on my wood because obviously it's um, more almost like in a raw wood inside of your drawers. So I didn't spritz it in there. I would used a rag to clean it up. But go back to the very basics of all of this. I took all of my drawers out before I cleaned with my cleaner and vacuumed everything. So I did vacuum inside the base, inside of my cabinets and inside my drawers. So I really, really, really emphasize if you, I'm gonna pull you down. So you can see inside my drawers look like brand new in here. So all of this has been vacuumed and I obviously don't spray it with my white lightning cleaner and clean up in there like that, but I do dry clean it. So um, I did use a damp cloth with my white lightning cleaner inside my drawers. And as you can see underneath the drawers, uh, everything is like, this is a very old piece of furniture, but the way that things were made back in the day, you can see the craftsmanship is just amazing. And so um, I just cleaned it really well with a damp cloth that had white lightning cleaner on it. So I just sprayed my cloth and that's the same way I apply my Easy Peasy Spray Wax. I spray my cloth and I apply it onto my piece. 
So after I, I will come in here now that my transfer is on, and maybe I didn't hit on that either. When I'm placing my transfer on my pieces, I never sand my piece. I always leave it in a porous state, if you will. You know, that chalky feel that you get when you're working with chalk paint. I leave it like that when I'm putting on my transfer. That may help a lot of people. I hear a lot of questions about transfers and peeling off and this sort of a nightmare that you might go through as a furniture artist. But the key for me has been, and it may be a missing link out there, you guys, is not sanding and leaving your um, chalk paint in its porous state before you apply your transfer. And then my transfer sticks really nicely. And I've never really had an issue with my transfers coming off. But after I get my transfers on, then I will come in with our little sanding sponge and I will lightly sand and knock down that, that roughness that we're feeling. And then I will um, put my either A, I will put my clear coat satin on it, or I'll come in here and spray Easy Peasy Spray Wax. But if I use my spray wax, I never spray my piece with spray wax. I always spray my towel or my rag, my application piece, and then place it on here. Once I get a coat on that way, then I will stand back and mist it about this far and then buff it. So those are some tidbit information that I'm not sure that gets in every class. But while we're here and we're thinking about it, I'm just going to throw it at you so you guys know that so if you're taking notes and this is something you haven't done before it's a, a great way to get your best results now to move on to the top because i don't want to take up everybody's evening but to move on to the top now i come in here and put on our dixie bell chocolate and there's a reason why i did that um and, th and I, this is why i wanted to touch on the top of this piece was not in the best of shape. You could have stripped it, um, but instead of stripping it, I was going to um, fake wood it, if you will. So my first coat on here, and like I said, this is one of the best aspects, and I should have, and you can go back in the videos, and you can see the top of this piece. It didn't look like the best. In fact, you could even see lots of little gouges and streaks on it. But I'm gonna pull you in. This is one coat. Now I did put the boss on, nothing else, just the boss. You guys seen the other night, it was on here. It's been curing a couple of days. Nothing on here but Dixie Bell's chocolate, chalk mineral paint. What I love the most about our paint is it's self-leveling and it has completely taken away and hidden all those little mars and imperfections that was on the top of this piece and you ask how is that possible most paints as soon as you paint it you're going to see it with the eye instantly but when our paint dries it's self leveling and just leveled out all those little imperfections so that quote that a coat of paint hides a multitude of sins is so accurate when it comes to dixie bell paint so i'm just going to pull you in and I'm gonna show you guys the top of this piece. So this was marred and it looks a little, right here is where I would sat my pieces and rubbed it off, but it's not gonna worry me because of what we're fixing to do this piece is um, going to come in here now and we're gonna create a faux wood look, if you will. And we're doing that tonight with paint. We are not using, hey Melissa, how are you girl? Are you staying free of the virus? I am do, working on this again tonight. You've seen what we were doing um, from last week. I think you were here last week. So this is Dixie Bell chocolate paint. And what we were talking about is how the leveling, the wonder, wonderful thing about our paint, and now I don't speak for other paints because I don't know if they actually have a self-leveling agent in their paints, but ours do. And look how beautiful. And you can't even see all the scratches and everything that was on the top of this piece. And the only thing I did to it, <clears throat> excuse me, was boss it, let it cure. And now you see that I am uh, have put one coat of Dixie Bell chocolate on here. Now I know 
As you can see, sorry, I had to get a sip of water. You can see this is the original hardware. It is kind of patinaed looking brown, a little bit darker. So I'm kind of playing off of this hardware and doing this top. Don't look at my nails. I know they're terrible. I've been working out here. So with this and chicken house and everything else, so they're looking bad tonight. <clears throat> and I apologize for being on with them looking like this, but that's what we do, right? We work with our hands. But tonight the goal is to make this look like wood. So my first thing I did was come in and get my chocolate on. So this is the chocolate that I use. Yes, it's a 32 ounce. This is one of our largest sizes. They come in um, 8, 16, 32, and actually you can get the gallon size. So this is the top and we are fixing to move on and make this look a little bit different. Let's see what she's saying. Is she going to the barrel race? Girl, have a great weekend. I know you'll do wonderful. I have whiskey. <laughs> oh, you don't, you're not worried about the coronavirus because you've got whiskey. I gotcha. Well, you have a good time out there. I know you'll do well. One of the best barrel racers I've ever known. So I know you got it. I am going to continue on with this tonight. And what I'm going to do is I'm coming in here and I've got my coffee bean. This is Dixie. See how dark that looks. But see, it's going to get a lot closer to the hardware. Let me pull you down here. See, it's a lot closer to the hardware color. So that's where I'm going. So I've got my coffee bean and I've got my Dixie Bell Mini. It's a little flat brush because I'm working on a flat surface. When I'm working on a beveled surface, most of the time I like to use my um, oval medium brush. And I have a paper plate and I have our wood grain tool. I know that doesn't look like much. Yes, you can see it's been used and most of the time I've used it with multiple colors so you can do it multiple ways. But this is our wood graining tool. And we are going to implement these items tonight and get started putting our one other thing. I have an old cloth, an old damp cloth. It's been washed, but it's stained. So I'm going to pull y'all. Let's see where I can put you. So I'm going to have to get you where you guys can see what we're doing. And oh, you're welcome, Miss Missy. Miss Missy, and I'm going to try and move my products while I'm talking to you out of the way because I want you to be able to see exactly how this wood grain tool works and kind of show you guys. And I got to keep my water by because my throat gets dry. So let's see if I can get you in. Probably not going to see me a whole lot, but the goal is not to see me. The goal is to show you guys um, how these products work. And um, if you can, see, hopefully you can see the top. Just let me know how well you can see the top on that. And maybe I'm gonna come around to the back. And if I move you further out, I don't know if you guys can still see. Y'all just tell me if you can still see well enough with this. I think you might could still see. But I might have to drag you in a little bit. I can't really tell um, with this video. I'm trying to figure out where the best place is to set you guys. <clears throat> Sorry for the bobble. But I really want you to be able to see um, what we're doing in here. And I would like to be able to get to where I can also see you guys. So if I get down in here, I might still be able to, yeah, I think we might be able to do. Can y'all see pretty good? Now I can barely see, um, bring, let me see what she's saying. Girl, I can't see. I have to come all the way back up. Bring it back forward a little. Okay, bring it back forward a little. This way, that better? I thought you had to leave and get to a barrel race. Are you just doing it this weekend? I don't know if I can see you guys as well or if I can pull this off being on my knees in here. My husband got me these knee pads, so I ought to see if I can use them. But um, anyway, I have my wood grain tool. I have a paper plate. 
and I have my um, brush here. So hopefully you guys can see this. So hopefully we'll get a little on here. Had a little piece of something in there. Every once in a while, um, obviously you saw my jugs, they're pretty well used and you might um, get a few pieces of trash or something in your piece, but I've tried to pick them out as I go along. And I don't know, I'm gonna have to stand up and I think she wants me to bring her in. How's that? That's much better, isn't it? Hopefully that's better. So don't look at my stomach, you know, while we're working here. I'm just teasing. You know, we all, whatever. We have to do what we have to do. But I just really want you to see what we're working on here. I'm gonna bring you in even closer. How's that, Missy? Is that better? I think you'll be able to see really what I'm doing. The goal is to show you the texture here. So yeah, I think this is gonna help you a whole lot. I don't know if it's too close, but I really, really, really want you guys to see this wood grain tool. Maybe move you back just a tad. Okay, so I've got my brush. It is a damp brush, by the way, guys. I always, always, always start with a damp brush. And when I do that, let me just get that too so that you guys can see. Dixie Bell has lots of um, mist bottles, so you can just mist it with your mist bottle. And what I mean is just a fine mist. So I just, see how fine that mist is? It's not putting out like tons of water. It is simple misting. So have a nice mist water br brush. So that, my coffee bean, and I will keep this handy with me because it's a good possibility that I'm gonna use it as I go along. So I'm gonna pull my chair back over here and set my water bottle there and set my rag there. And now I'm gonna get all of these things out of our way and I'm gonna pour my coffee bean. It's not gonna take a lot, you guys. So hopefully it won't have a bunch of chunks. See how it just dropped a bunch of chunks on there? That's what happens when we don't have them in the phyllo bottles. How's that? And, but this is at home. So you guys know we improvise when we're at home. So I'm just gonna pour some of my coffee bean out. Probably won't need that much. You guys know it goes a long way. And get this out of my way. So now my paint is on my plate. Get these, get these chunks off of my piece. So here is my paint. And now all I'm gonna do is take my brush. I really feel like you guys need to be, uh, like so you can see, like the strip. So, so I'm gonna take my coffee bean and this kind of has to go like all at once. Once you start, you just kind of gotta keep moving with it. So you may not get to see all the way down, but I'm gonna try to get you to where you can actually see the work. That's the goal. So here is my coffee bean. I've got it on the end of my brush and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna paint my strip. So I'm just gonna paint my coffee bean on right over the top of my chocolate. Yes, my chocolate's on here, it's cured. Pretty, pretty cured. It's been on here um, most of today. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna make a little bit. Now, when I wet this, now you guys might be able to see any imperfections because when your paint is wet, that's when you're gonna actually see imperfections on your pieces. So because of Dixie Belle being, and I see a few chunks of stuff in here, but I'm not gonna flip out because I can pick them out. And I'm gonna be using my, my tool on here. So let me just get my goal is to show you guys the process. So I'm just gonna get, you know, about the width of my, about the width of my um, tool. And I have some trash in here. So just, I just take my finger and pick it out. So it, that happens. Don't panic. I mean, it's not gonna be the end of the world and we're gonna be using so it's good that it happens so you guys can see. That one might not be. So I just use the end of my finger. So there is one strip of paint. 
Can you guys see that or do I need to bring you closer? You guys, just tell me. I think you do. I think we need to come a little bit on top. I want you right on top of this wood grain tool. So now I'm gonna take my wood graining tool and I'm going to just kind of start at this corner. Try to get you all so you can see. So kind of start at this corner and just kind of drag and roll, drag and roll, drag and roll. And you can kind of see what it did there. If you don't like it, just remember you can go back over it, don't freak out. So then drag and roll, drag. See how I'm doing it? I'm just barely moving my piece. Can you see, can you guys see that? I don't know if you can see that. It just makes for an amazing top coat finish. So I'm gonna come in here now. I'm just got my towel, I'm wiping off my tool. So let's just come right in here. Just another wood grain tool wide. Just using the same thickness of my paint. And I have got chunks in this paint, which I don't really like. I don't know why it's in here. It just rolled right off. So I'm just gonna pull it off with my finger. Get it out of my way. Don't panic. I mean, it's not good that we have, to, I have some trash in my paint, but I can work around it. And sometimes that's what these broadcast lives are for because you will see that you're not the only one that ever once in a while will have some junk in the trunk. Just don't worry about it. Just kind of keep going here. Now I'm going to take my wood graining tool. You can turn it the other way, flip it the other way, and just kind of rock it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Can you see that? I don't know. You guys tell me if you can see it. I'm hoping you can. Then I'm going to rock it back the other way. And I'm going to do another strip. Hope you guys can see. Can't tell, Missy, tell me, what are you seeing? Can you see it, what I'm doing here, hon? I know it looks kind of crazy when you first do it. So I'm doing another, another run. Now, like I say, if you don't like it, you can always go back over and do it again. Can you see that? I can't, let's see. That should, what would be? Yes, it would look cool. Can you see the wood grain though? I don't know if y'all can see how that tool, just kind of sliding it around back and forth, making that look like when this dries, it will look really, 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 really cool. Now I am wiping, can you see I'm wiping my tool off, taking off the excess. Yes, I'm just using one of my old rags and wiping the paint back. I'm gonna continue on. I just don't know if you guys can see as well, but in the daylight, um, I will get pictures so you guys can see as well. Man, I'm telling you, I got lots. I might should have not poured the paint. I might have should have just dipped into it because this particular jar, for whatever reason, has some problems in the paint. Let me just grab this real quick. So I'm just gonna open up my jar here and I'm hoping it's not in my entire jar. And I'm gonna just grab me some paint I think it doesn't matter. It's just kind of in my paint. And that's probably my fault. It always is because I'm always opening it and using it in workshops. And then if people want to use it, I just let them. And so then you're going to see a little trash in there. So now I'm going to come in with my tool. I'm going to flip it back the other way. Can't remember if I did or not put you guys here and then I'm just gonna come in and drag 
Remember, if you don't like it, you can always just paint right back over it and pull it back off. Can you see the grain that it's kind of creating? And this is made, this tool is made to flip one way and the other. So you flip it one way or the other. And um, now that I did that, I don't remember which one I started with. Turn it this way. And then just kind of come in here and just glide it down your paint. And I'm just kind of gliding it, rocking it back and forth. And I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna like that with this vanity or not. You may or you may not. It's just totally a preference. So if you don't like it, like I say, you can always go back over it and paint it just all one solid color. But for intense purposes tonight, I just wanted to kind of come in here and show you guys how to um, give yourself a wood grain effect without having the wood grain. So like I say, if you don't like it, you can always come back in and change it. And, um, but anyway, it's good for showing, uh, for, a t for this video to kind of just show you guys. And that was the reason, sorry, I'm probably not where you guys can see. Coming in here and dragging this tool across here to make a weathered wood grain effect. And like I say, if you don't like it, you can always come in with, um, I'm gonna flip this back. You can always come back in with a damp cloth and just pretty much wash it right back off because obviously we're using water-based paint or just paint back over it in the coffee bean and you will be done. So let me just kind of scale you back and I don't know, can you guys really, um, I don't know if you guys can really see that uh, up close. It's kind of hard to tell if you guys, because it's wet, it's really hard to tell if you guys can see how the wood grain, once it dries, how the wood grain is going to look. Does that help? I know, I went and grabbed my, my and so here, kind of an up upper version, kind of see how, um, the wood grain would look on that piece. So even though it's fake, um, a lot of people, once it dries, would never ever realize that you really fake the grain on this. So um, that's really how you can, hopefully you guys get a good view that way to kind of see how the grain looks if you were standing over the top of this piece. Now, once it dries, obviously it's gonna, it'll be set in all the grooves. It'll look like, like real wood. Because it's wet and you see that it's shiny, you really can't see as well. But if you, like I say, if you don't like it, it's wet right now, you can always go back over it and do something different with it. So I'm gonna try and get you where I can see you so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This is the wood graining tool that I used. Now I didn't drag the sharp, let's see. I didn't drag this edge through it. Can, I don't know if you guys can see, see those edges? I didn't drag that through it. Now you can for different textures and different looks. And also on the other end, you see how it has these barbs on it, but I haven't tend to use them yet. Um, I don't know. I kind of like the wood grain look. Now, once this dries, and we were talking that self-leveling, once it dries, it'll lay down a little bit. Now, it, from here, it looks like it's kind of rippled, but once it dries, it'll have much more of a leveled effect um, because it's self-leveling. And the reason I wanted to show this tonight is because if you have a piece of furniture that just has some really rough spots on it and you, um, some people want to sand it and you don't want to sand. A lot of problems with these old pieces of furniture is if you sand the top of that piece 
If it's deep, you're gonna sand through your veneer and then you're gonna have a whole new plethora of problems that you probably don't wanna get into. So the reason I'm kind of showing you this, now I'm gonna come along the edge obviously and put in the coffee bean so it will match here and it'll be a little darker and it won't be such contrast between my two colors. But like I was saying, if you sand through your veneer, then you have a whole nother issue and um, if you do have imperfections like this particular piece had, I didn't have to sand them all out. Um, I did clean it obviously and I put my boss on there and that was to protect it from bleeding through, bleeding the color back through my paint. Even though I went with the dark, you probably didn't have to do that, but in my case, I always do it just in case. I don't wanna come out and redo my work for a whole nother time and get into all that extra work. None of us do. So this is a way of tricking the eye to not see every imperfection on your piece. It could be done on a side. It doesn't matter where you do it. You could have done this on all the drawers and then just painted your base one solid color and then did your drawers like this. And nobody's really gonna realize that they're not seeing a wood grain and that you made that wood grain and that that's not tr really the real thing. So um, that's why I use chocolate and that's why I use the coffee bean because they make a nice contrast. Now you could come in here with our, um, you can come in here with, what am I thinking? Of our voodoo gel, uh, gels, our voodoo gel stains and do the same thing. So if you would have put the voodoo gel stain on here in up in smoke and then you wanted to come back in with the tobacco road or vice versa, just let your first color dry and cure in your gel stains. Let that dry and then come back in and then apply your second gel stain, do it with a brush, and then you can use your wood graining tool to um, pull that back off. I'm not sure if it's the exact kind of, with this particular style, that everybody would like this on the top of their piece. Now I did it, and I will probably bring you over. I did it on another piece in this garage, in my workshop, and it is cured, and I will uncover it and show you guys. While you're looking at that, I will move a couple of things around and um, bring you in. Now obviously I'm gonna have to clean my brush and my wood graining tool really well. So um, if I decide to keep it this way, but I really wanted to just do it for the tutorial tonight to kind of show you and um, I can decide later if I feel like yes, that's gonna work for me or no, it isn't. Um, and that way you guys at least got to see how it is applied. And that was my main goal. And let me move a few things out of the way here. And that way I can, I should have had this ready. I didn't think about it last at the last minute obviously you guys know how that is and move this and so this is a piece that is just kind of hiding over here well why she's hiding is because she's in the cure mode and so she is still she's still curing but this is the exact same process and um, I'm gonna pull you so you guys can see her and I just kind of set my thing aside here. And I'm gonna bring you in so that perhaps you can see the top of this piece. So this is the same textured look that you got over there on here. So this is the dried version. So this is how it's gonna look once it's completely dried. And so you see how it looks like the wood grain is a little, um, I had a piece of something over it. But you see how the wood grain on this piece looks. Maybe I need to bring you high. So here, so this is the dried effect. So I'm gonna bring you up so you can kind of see um, how that looks once it's dried and cured. You see how it's all laying nice and flat and, um, and it just looks so beautiful on the right piece. Now it might not be the right texture for that particular vanity, but the whole goal tonight was to do a tutorial to show you how to create a wood grain effect without having the wood grain. So if you have imperfections on a piece that you wanna hide, 
and um, you don't want to sand through your veneer, this is a good way to trick the eye into never knowing that it ever existed because of all the different designs in this piece. And that is all just the wood graining tool. So I'm gonna bring you back down. So I apologize for all this bobbling that I'm doing to you guys tonight, but I just wanted you to be able to see, hey, Melissa, and uh, see how that looks on this piece. So this is one of the pieces, obviously, that she's been curing in here. And you guys saw me do this on a live before, so there's, um, but this is the same technique as what I just did over here, and this is in the cured version. So it's really cool how this was not even, this was a, this is obviously a French provincial, but it was not even a wood grain up here on the top. So it is almost Famica looking. It wasn't Famica, but you know what I'm talking about. So a laminate top, so that's what I mean to say. So on a laminate top on this piece. But, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the exact same technique as what we just did over there. So I'm gonna put you back over here. You see how this looks wet and you can't see that it's laying flat yet? But it will, it will lay down. So this is the same deal, only with that wood grain tool. So it's a mock wood grain effect, if you will. And it's all done with paint. So let me uh, get y'all back on the floor here. So that pretty much shows you the, um, the whole piece that we've been working on. Ah, uh, let's not drop you. And um, that wood grain. It looks kind of funky right now. You can almost see how it looks different levels. But once it dries, it's gonna be flat just like that piece you guys saw. Hi from Colorado, how are you tonight? <coughs> So tonight we went over, um, our tutorial tonight was on using this wood graining tool up here on the top of this piece. And um, I don't know if you guys have ever done it before. This is chocolate underneath. And then on the top, I came in and put the coffee bean. And I got a little piece of trash right there. So that's what is on this piece that you are seeing that is curing, that will be curing and drying. And it will lay flat it will have some ripples and um so that is basically how you can go about getting your um faux looking wood on your piece and <clears throat> i may stand back and i may decide yay i might keep that if not you know i might come back in and just do the whole top and coffee bean but for our video tutorial session the whole goal was to show you guys how to use the wood graining tool and create this lovely textured wood look <coughs> on these two colors that we use tonight um, are the chocolate and coffee bean. Now, um, one of the things you want to be sure is that your bottom color is cured or dried, let's say. So you want it to be dry for at least several hours before you try to do a wood grain effect on your piece. So just so you guys know that and um, and then you're good to go and you could use any gel stain any paint color combination as long as you have the wood graining tool and that's what this is and the tool rocks back and forth obviously I need to wash it now it rocks back and forth so when I go one way which you guys saw I finished off from the start all the way down and then I flip it the other way and do the opposite direction so that's how I get two different wood grain looks going different ways so in case you guys haven't had the opportunity to use this, you um, also can use your, I use my spray brush, or my spray bottle to spray water on obviously this water-based paint and kind of clean this off. Now I did have a dry rag during this. You guys can go back in our tutorials and you will be able to see this um, again once our broadcast is over because I wanted to come in here and just kind of show you this. I know you guys have limited time on the airwaves um, every night, but we appreciate you coming in with us and watching our videos and uh, being here with us. And thank you for joining us so much. Thank you, Miss Vicki and Melissa and all of you gals that have been out there um, with us tonight. We so appreciate you um, liking and um, jumping on our page with us. Um, if you are interested in seeing more 
tutorials that we have done from start to finish in this workshop. Some of the pieces behind us and multiple other pieces, you will be able to see those on our YouTube channel. I do have a YouTube channel under the Vintage Queen as well as um, here on our um, main page for um, on our Facebook page. At our, and we are featured tonight, our products featured tonight are Dixie Bell Paint Products. This is one of the tools that is one of their wood graining tools. And we are, um, we do obviously use them and their products as well as Prima Design Transfers. This is the uh, Rose Celebration on this piece. This is the Savannah Mist. We have drop cloth on here. This color is the apricot. And, um, and now you see the coffee bean and um, that is pretty much our tutorial for tonight. So we thank you guys so much for jumping on with us. We thank you for sharing our page. We thank you for your questions and comments. Um, if we did not answer anything, I will definitely go back through our video this evening and I will answer each and every one of your questions and comments along the way. If you are local to us, we have a cabinet, the kitchen cabinet class on Saturday. It is 2 to 4 p.m. That is at the Kernersville Habitat Restore. So jump on out and come and see us. We will be redoing cabinets and showing you guys how to reface your cabinets using chalk paint and creating a whole brand new look in your kitchen. So stop on by and see us out there. Thank you so much for watching. It's Kimberly and I will see you again next Tuesday at 8 o'clock for a brand new redo. Thank you so much and have a very blessed night and an awesome weekend, you guys. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Please have someone go live. Please have someone go live. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> what do you mean, Miss Melissa? Thank you. I will be back, honey. I will be back on Tuesday night. You have a great rodeo out there. Bring in the dollars, young lady. Have a blessed one, everybody. Bye-bye.